Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. We are playing with, yet again, another foundation. However, we are taking a little trip down to the drugstore. We are testing out a powder foundation that is brand new, just launched from e.l.f. This is their Camo Powder Foundation. There is so much hype around this product right now. As of now, I think it's only available through Ulta.com, and it's only available in 12 shades. Now, most of the shades sold out. I don't know if they've been restocked, yet or anything. I don't think it's available quite yet through e.l.f. directly. This will be launching, I think, in like 30, 35 shades or something, which is awesome for a drugstore product. I think that that is absolutely fantastic. When I got to the website, I was fortunate enough to pick up what I think is my shade. This is in the shade Light 210 Neutral. There was only this shade and one other available. I was like, it was meant to be. We are going to do a little bit of a wear test. There are a couple of things about this product that gets me super excited for it, especially since it is a drugstore product. The ingredients look so promising. I'm going to zoom you guys in as per usual so you can get up close and personal on my mug to see what this foundation looks like, and we will see if it is as good as the hype that surrounds it. You guys, who is she? She has her hair down. I'm doing this thing for the new year that that I am done with constantly wearing my hair up. I have convinced myself for the longest time, I actually made a TikTok about this, that wearing my hair up makes my face look thinner. I don't know where I got this from. No one's ever told me this. It's ridiculous. So I'm gonna wear my hair down more and I am rocking the grays, girl. I don't give a shit. It is 2022 and we are going to be living our best lives. First and foremost, I need to conceal because with a powder foundation, you can't put cream on top of it for the most part, for the most part. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly dab a little bit of the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue Concealer. And for those that are interested, this is in the shade 13 Light Medium. I'm gonna go ahead and blend that out with my little dupe for the Tati Blendiful that I got on Amazon. I'm also gonna be using this for the foundation as well. The foundation does come with a little um, applicator in there, but I usually don't like those. I do have dry skin. And while I'm blending this out, let's talk a little bit more about the specs of this product. It is supposed to give more of a natural matte finish. It is talc free, and I believe it is also cruelty free. I think e.l.f. in general is cruelty free, which is fantastic. I think the most exciting thing about this product is the fact that it is talc free. People have their thoughts on certain ingredients, but for those that care, again, this is a talc free formula, which is awesome. And I do also want to mention one more time that it is amazing that this is launching in so many different shades. Now time for the powder. It is winter and I do have very dry skin. I do want to mention that my skin has been going through it the last week because it has been overnight below zero temperatures here. It has been so freaking cold, negative dew points, which means there's like no moisture in the air. So I primed my skin good in preparation for this. So let's do it. So like I said, it does come with that little applicator. I don't like these. It just, if you have dry skin, honestly, stay away. This will make a powder product look like absolute cake on your skin. So I'm going to go in with the Velour Puff, pick up a good amount. Ooh, wow. She is pigmented. I don't know if it's my shade. It might be a little bit dark, but we're going to go in with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dab this into the skin. I do love a good powder foundation, especially in the summer months. I feel like it's a lot more comfortable to wear. That's just me. I just feel like they stay in place a little bit longer. Sometimes in the warmer months, I don't really want a thick liquid on my skin. I just want a little bit of powder. Now it says you can apply this obviously with the sponge, with a velour puff. You can use a kabuki brush if you would like. I have done that in the past as well with powders, but I do love these little puffs. I feel like I'm getting pretty good coverage out of it so far. I do have to kind of dip in. I think that this is supposed to kind of offer a more medium to full coverage, but so far, I do have to say it is looking quite nice on my skin for a powder product, also considering how dry I am. So I do just kind of want to do one side of my face to start so you guys can kind of see what it looks like. The only place that I tend to have an issue 
with powder foundations is right here. My skin is very porous, I will say. It's full of pores in my forehead. I do have some fine lines there and sometimes powder just wants to really exaggerate that, but I don't show that going on right now. I do see a little bit possibly of some oxidizing going on, or it could just be that this shade might actually just be a tad too dark for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull some down the neck just so we don't have any lines of demarcation. Blend it into the ear. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and dab some of this. I have glitter on my finger. Where did that come from? Well, we got glitter now. I'm just gonna set my under eye with it a little bit too. One half done. So this is the side that we just applied the powder to. Obviously before the powder, I am going to mention that I only primed my skin with my skincare. There is no other primers going on here. I don't film with a filter or anything like that on my camera. And yeah, so far this is looking decent on the skin. I do notice I have a little bit of exaggeration in my pores right in this area right here. I don't notice it on my nose. Don't love what it's doing right here in this region of things in my forehead, but I wanna let it warm up with the skin. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna finish putting on the powder on the other side. I'm gonna try a brush actually. I'm gonna take this Laura Lee brush here. I'm gonna pick up some of this product and I'm gonna try it with this brush. Do you see a lot of like my natural color still coming through? Like I can still see a bit of the redness in my cheeks here. So I might actually wanna conceal a bit more underneath, but that's preference. So I don't actually see a massive difference between the brush and the puff. I do think that maybe I might get a little bit more of a precise application with the brush, a little bit more of it pressing into the pores versus the puff, which is strange because usually that's what this is really good for. But overall, I think it's looking, I have a hair on me. I think it's looking okay. Am I obsessed with this so far? No. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop off camera. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of my makeup, let this warm up on the skin, and then I'll be right back. All right, so makeup is completed. This has been sitting on my face now probably for about 20 minutes or so. And I have to say that the longer it sat on my face and after setting it down, with some setting mist. I am actually really impressed with the way that this looks. I mean, with the setting mist, it just melted right into my skin. My skin looks flawless. I am not seeing any settling. At first, I was a little bit concerned about like this area right here and right here. But like I said, once I wore it for about 20 minutes and set everything down with a hydrating mist, this looks beautiful on the skin. It just looks so natural and stunning and powders and highlighter actually sat beautifully on top of it. As you can see, I was worried that it was going to look just a little bit too heavy for me because again, I have dry skin. Powders can be a little bit dangerous at times for me, but I am actually really really impressed with the way that this looks so far. So we are going to do a wear test. What time is it right now? It is about 1 p.m. So I am gonna check in here in a couple of hours or so. We'll see how long I feel like wearing my makeup today, but I will check in with you guys in a little bit. I bet you all knew that I wouldn't last with my hair down very long and you are right, but in my defense, I was doing some cleaning. I cleaned out my fridge, did a couple of other things, took out the trash. Nobody cares. Let's get back to the makeup. I have had this powder foundation on for about two and a half hours now. So a good first impressions, I would say. Let's talk about what I like. So far, I am liking how good this has melted into my skin, if that's the right word for it. At first, like I said, I was a little bit concerned about my pores. I do notice a little tiny bit of exaggeration right here in this area and a little tiny bit around my nose, but because I have dry skin, this is not out of the ordinary for me with a powder foundation. Despite that even, my skin looks pretty damn good for having makeup on it. Makeup is not going to cover everything when it comes to wrinkles and pores. You can find products that blur things, but it's only gonna go so far. So that's why I say that considering other powder foundations that I have tried, this one isn't like behaving out of the ordinary by any means. It has become actually quite glowy looking on the skin. I did set it down, however, with the Revolution Beauty Coconut Restore Fixing Spray, which by the way, 
this is new and they just sent this to me and I am obsessed. It is a total dupe for the hangover setting mist from Too Faced and it smells so good too. So that might have been what added a bit to this hydration, but I personally like that look. I feel like if you were to use more of like an all-nighter or a Milani Make It Last setting mist on top of this fixing spray, that you might retain a little bit more of that natural matte finish versus the more glowy finish that I have going on right now with this product. So far, I will say so good. The only other thing I will make note of is that it is exaggerating my fine lines a bit right here here, which I will say with like the pure 4-in-1 powder foundation, which is like my all-time favorite powder foundation. I never really noticed that too much with that one. So this is something that I would knock it a few points for, would be the fact that it is creasing a bit right here. I don't know if someone would really notice it too much if they were just standing in front of me. Like if I look in the mirror and I look up close, it becomes a little bit more obvious. At the end of the day, for me personally, it's not necessarily something that would deter me from using the product. It's just one of those things where you have to kind of mix and match, try different primers, different setting mists, see what works best with this type of product. I am gonna wear this for a few more hours, see how it goes. I'll check in maybe in about three or four more hours, give it a really good idea of how this wears throughout the day, and I will be back in a little bit. All right, final check in for the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. I do have a lot of thoughts. I have been wearing this now for about six or seven hours. The only thing I have touched up at this point is my lipstick. First things first, this has worn incredibly. At one point I did run a couple of errands and I did have a mask on and I didn't really notice much fading at all. Now I did only have the mask on for about 45 minutes, but I would say that's still pretty good. I did see some of the makeup transfer to the inside of the mask. So I do know that some of it had to have come off, but overall, like it looks still pretty good on my skin, like around my nose, there really isn't much fading at all around my mouth area. As I always note in all of my foundation wear tests right here, in this area is where my foundation tends to wear the most mask or not. This is just where things start to fade on me. Next thing I want to notate is I did notice my skin getting a bit oily in this area, which is strange because again, I have very dry skin. Upon initial application with this foundation, I felt like my skin did look quite dry. However, as I wore it, my skin definitely warmed up to the formulation, to the powder, and I do feel like I did get a little bit oily in in this area right here, but honestly, nothing too bad. I mean, to me, it kind of just looks like I have a nice kind of like glow going on. Like my skin looks very nice and glowy. The settling here, or not really settling, I should say, the creasing I have right here, doesn't look any worse, doesn't look any different. I don't even see the product necessarily collecting there. I don't wanna say that it's settling because the product isn't settling, it's just that I do have some creasing, more or less. The pores that I have going on right here in this area too, because I do look a little bit more on the dewy side, I feel like my pores do look a little bit obvious, but hey, skin is skin. For me, that doesn't really bother me. I am not like psycho about like covering up every imperfection on my face. I personally have very realistic expectations when it comes to product, especially foundation. I know that it's not going to get rid of everything, but I do also know that there are products that exaggerate things. I don't really feel like it's being exaggerated too much. I just feel like that blurring effect isn't as prominent now that I've had it on for several hours. For, I think this is what, like $11 or something like that? I think it was 11 bucks. For this foundation to wear like it did and to give me the look that it does, is very similar to the Pure 4-in-1 foundation. The Pure 4-in-1 does blur a bit more. I feel like it does a little bit of a better job of blurring on my skin, but I mean, come on, for $11, I think that one's like 30 some bucks. To me, this is pretty good. I am impressed with the coverage. I do like the coverage of it. It does let your natural skin peek through just a tiny bit. I think I might actually like this a little bit more than the L'Oreal Infallible. I am gonna say that. There is just something about the finish of this product that I really do enjoy. Let me know if you are excited to try this powder foundation. I think it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you have dry skin. It does work. You can get it to work. Just make sure that you have hydrated base. Use a bit more of a hydrating setting mist. Remember, you can always layer your setting mist. You can lay down something that 
sets everything down, gives you a little bit more luminosity, and then you can go in with something that's more of like a fixing mist. So you can mix and match. There are ways to really get good product to last a long time on your face while working with your skin type. It's quite easy, you just kinda gotta figure it out a little bit. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you are now interested in trying this out. Are you a fan of powder products? What are your thoughts? Of course, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Mwah. Bye guys.